Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Amen. No, I'm not the senior pastor. I am uh, our executive pastor here at Restoration Christian Fellowship. My name is Derek Washington to our visitors, and we want to thank you, visitors, because there's so many other places that you could have gone today, but you came here to bless us. Those of you that are online today, thank you for dropping in. Um, I want to also lift up our folks in Malawi for those that of you that read Pastor K's posts. I, I just look forward to them posts all the time. I begin to understand how Americanized I am because uh, they, they in outhouses and black mambas running around on the ground. <laughs> and I'm like, boy, 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 the missions field. Is something else. The mission field is something else. So we want to continue praying with, I uh, know all of us got armbands and things like that, uh, wristbands and things like that to just make it prevalent. But I stand with them because all 10 of those, them, Pastor Felix, Pastor K, John, who had a bout of sickness while he has been there, and Denise, who's worried and been at his side, and all the others, uh, Gordon, who's been the nurse, and them watching thousands and thousands of youth pour into that camp with a hunger for the Lord. And I think that's a blessing when we can stand with them. Amen? Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. I won't be before you long, and I'm going to be a little different today. In my mind, I've been... On this journey, I've been on a quest uh, because I haven't been able to hear God. And uh, so about 104 days ago, because I'm journaling now, I had a good friend that said, Derek, why, why don't you journal anything while you're praying so when God tells you something, you can write it down and you can go back and read it. And I don't write in it every single day, but this is my 104th day this morning of praying every single day. Amen. Amen. And when I look back on the pages in the beginning, I wrote how under attack things started happening in my life. I mean, attack after attack after attack began when I started this quest. And on the 104th, 101st day, I had not, well, for the previous 100 days, I had not heard from God. I hadn't heard a voice. I haven't, hadn't heard anything. But on that 101st day, it wasn't an audible sound. But something resonated in my spirit. And what I wrote in my book, and I opened the pages of the Bible, the answer to my questions just popped in my spirit. And I started weeping uncontrollably because I started to see and get that frequency that had been gone for so long. Can y'all hear me? That's the title of my sermon this morning. Y'all remember that Verizon man? Y'all remember him? Can you hear me, man? Yeah, for 48 years, my frequency tunes out as I get further and further away from him. You know how when you're traveling and you put it on a station and you keep traveling and before long you're getting so far away from the source that's a static and you can't hear. And my life has been getting closer, getting closer, and it becomes a little bit more audible, getting closer, and it becomes a little, and I say, Lord, can you hear me? And then I take some steps back and it, begins to be staticky and staticky again. 
And my life just feels like it's on this yo-yo of hearing him. And then long periods of time where I don't hear him. And I said, I got to put a stop to that. I got to change my prayer life. I got to change my walk. I got to define the moment of when I want to really live my life for God. So I don't walk up here perfect. I'm going to say some things up here that are personal to me. I don't come here with uh, any kind of, uh, I, I'm just a transparent guy because I, I, I just, a long time ago, I used to hold secrets from my wife. I used to hold secrets on the job. I used to hold all these secrets in my life. And I said to myself, I will know more. So sometimes I'm transparent to a fault. Because I can't hold secrets anymore because of what it did to me in my life and in my walk. So I don't hold them anymore. And so whatever the Holy Spirit wants this morning is what you're going to get. Amen. Amen. We're going to be in Jeremiah 33, 1 to 3 for a little bit. That's where I want to start. And then I have seven points for those of you that want to write down any of those. And if, if we get through them, we get through them. If we don't, we'll pick it up on Wednesday night. But I have seven points that I want to hit on. Lord, can you hear me now? And, and why the Lord may not be hearing your prayers why he sometimes heard me and a lot of times he didn't. So can we put that first, Jeremiah 33, and we'll read. It reads this way. Then the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah the second time, while he was still confined in the court of the guard, saying, Thus says the Lord who made the earth, the Lord who formed it to establish it, the Lord is his name. Call to me and I will answer you. And I will tell you great and mighty things which you do not know. Call to me. Make an audible sound to him. Because when you begin to call on him, he's listening. And I found out that God wants to answer our prayers. That's what I found out and that's what I know. He wants to answer our prayers. He wants to give you the desires of your heart. But what's stopping it? That word answer in the Hebrew, it means I'll shout back. So if you shout to God, when he answers, he'll shout back to you. Because he wants to put it on blast. He wants everybody to know that he's done what he said he would do in your life. And we just have to be humble enough not to take the glory from him. Call out to him. And he will answer. And he will show you things that you do not know. He will show them to you. But this is what we have to do. And, and I'm going to read... One more scripture in Jeremiah. You guys don't have it, Anthony. I just want to read it because it's a familiar uh, passage to all of us. But I want you to hear it again and read it into your hearing. Jeremiah 29, 11 through 14. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. Then you will call upon me. Then you will call upon me. Remember these folks are in ex exile in Babylon. Jeremiah has went and told the king of Judah that you guys are about to be taken over because you're not doing what God wants you to do. So you're going to be in captivity for 70 years. 70 years. And it feels like I've been in captivity for 48 then you will call upon me and come and pray to me and I will listen. For some reason, we got to be broke down to our very last compound to be able to hear from him. But if we call on me, 
The word says he will listen. I will be found. God is not hiding from us. Most of the times we hiding from him. Where are you, Adam and Eve? Hiding in the bushes, covering up. The Lord wants to be found. I will be found by you, declares the Lord, and bring you back out of captivity. So I want to set the stage with saying God wants to answer our prayers, but why isn't he? Can you hear me now? The first point I want to bring on this, we're going to bring this up, is Isaiah 59, 1 and 2. Let me read that. Isaiah 59, 1 and 2. Amen. Behold, the Lord's hand is not so short that it cannot save, nor is his ear so dull that he cannot hear. But your iniquities have made a separation between you and your God, and your sins have hidden his face from you so he does not, what? Hear you. Sinful behavior. We have erected a wall by the iniquities. Now, don't get me wrong. We all sin. We all what? Miss the mark. We miss the mark in our lives. And those of us that miss the mark, he says we can get back up, say we sorry, apologize, and keep on moving. But that's different for iniquities. That's premeditated. I, I thought about it. I've admired it. I want to do it again because it feels good. Iniquity, continuous cycles. I'm not going to stop hitting the pipe or the bottle. I'm just going to keep on going. And I'm going to keep living my life the same way. I'm going to keep running downstairs in front of when nobody's home in front of my computer. And I'm going to keep doing things that he doesn't want me to do. Iniquitous cycles erect walls between God and us. Somebody say break the wall down. We got too many wall talk these days, don't we? But if we keep that iniquitous cycle, God cannot hear your prayer. And what that does is it frustrates us. But we'll just go ahead and shack up and pray to God. We won't trust him. So we re erect these walls to where he can't hear us. We get frustrated. We stop doing what we need to do. And we can't continue to do that over and over and again. It's wicked. We subscribe to it. We, we, we got bigger satellite bills than we bring God ties in the church. And we don't see that as being much because there's some deeper things. So there are sinful behaviors that keep God from hearing us. And I'm guilty. I run in them things every now and again, and it's hard pulling yourself back out. And so we got to watch that. The second one, put that up on Psalm 68 and 18. I regard or cherished in some of the Bibles. Wickedness in my heart. The Lord will not hear. Regard, <laughs> I consider doing it, cherish, I admire it, I, I, I adore it, I treasure it, I dream about it, I think about it all the times, and, and what we think about that, well, I'm not out there committing adultery, but when we think about it, God said, that's a sin too, 
that builds a wall. It builds a wall between us and God, our thought life. 2 Corinthians 5, the B part of 5 says, take every thought captive and submit it to God. Put it under his obedience. And I believe Pastor preached a, <laughs> preached a sermon on that. So just, I mean, you're just walking around just pulling thoughts out of the air and submitting it. But what I submit to you is if we don't have anything on the inside of us, then the crisis is suppressed in us and we built a wall in us that God can't hear our prayers, then we can't really submit anything on the inside because it won't come under obedience. And when we begin to understand that a thought souls a feeling in you. Souls a feeling. And uh, when it sows that feeling, it reaps a habit. And you start doing it over and over again. And when you sow a habit, it reaps a lifestyle. And now you don't really know that you're doing it anymore because it's part of your lifestyle. And when you sow the lifestyle, it reaps a destiny. Do you want your destiny? Do I want my destiny to about building walls between God and I? That's what the thought life does. Renew your mind, Romans says. Renew it. Daily, Paul struggled daily, and he told us about it in his transparency. Because that thought life can take a life of its own, and before you know it, you're just doing and you're defending it, and you're making right look like making wrong look like right, and then we get all out of whack. And we get frustrated because we still saying, God, can you hear me? And the frequency is all off. Number three. James four and three. You ask and do not receive. Because you ask with wrong motives. So that you may spend it on your pleasures. We come to God. Asking for a new car. Brand new. Lord, let me have a new car. And God ain't listening to you. Because the car that he did give you. You ain't picked up nobody and brought nobody to church yet. See, you, you, we want to have a new car. <laughs> Maybe put some 24s on it. <laughs> Bring the shine on us. Not God. Wrong motives. Lord, <laughs> Lord, give me the winning numbers to the lotto. Come on, Lord. I'm a tithe. I, I, not just 10%, God. I'm going to give you 20. Give me the winning lotto. Wrong motives. I tried that. <laughs> I, I'm, I ain't going to lie. I did. I tried it. Back in 2008, doing loans. They had these loans called stated loans. Giving janitors jobs with 150000 that they make per year. So they can get in a property that they can't afford. I'm telling you, I, I, I'm telling you, you do some stupid things to try to get that dollar. And you begin to put things before God and they begin to be out of whack. And you're asking for all these things and we're not willing to do anything. 
See, we kind of get desires of the heart because I say God wants to be found. He wants to answer our prayers. But we get the desire of the heart mixed up with God's will. So we begin to put the desires of the heart first. And we put God's will second, third, or fourth position. And those desires get all messed up. And our motives get all messed up in life. And we got to stop doing that. Solomon. Y'all remember the story. It's a great story. He was, I don't remember if he was preteen or a, a post-teen or what he was. But God came to him and said, I will give you everything you want. And Solomon said, God, what I want is to please you. So will you please give me some knowledge and some wisdom so that I can govern your people? God's will. And God says to him, wow, since you didn't ask for long life and you didn't ask for wealth and you didn't ask for all these things. I'm going to give them to you anyway because it was about my will. And if I begin to do your will first, it will automatically line up with the desires of our heart. But that's where we get confused. We get our desires first and God is second and he can't hear you because the motives are all wrong. And when the motives are all wrong, you keep saying, can you hear me now? The frequency never turns up. I never can hear him in my mind's eye to do what he wants me to do. Because I got my stuff, this whole pleasure thing, hedonism, the philosophy of hedonism. It's just to do what feels good. That's what the devil wants you to do. Do what feels good. It's quicker. It's faster. You get a quick... 10 minute high and it takes you from reality that's what he wants us to do he wants us to seek our own glory before we seek his it's out of whack if y'all are like me and you want your prayers to be heard and you want the desires of your heart I gotta flip some things we got to do some different things in our life. We got to trust him. And I know it's hard. I didn't hear from him for 100 days. But on the 101st, on the 101st day, and I'm going to tell you, it ain't nothing like God answering prayer. And if you get, if you get it going right, He'll answer the prayer before you ask. That's when you're going right. That's when you're going right. Boy, I tell you, he'll answer the prayer before you even ask it. Before it comes out of your mouth, he will answer that prayer. Woo! Man, I'm not there yet. But I got somewhere to strive. I got somewhere to go. Because I want to do his will. Let's put the next one up, four. Amen. 1 John 5, 14 to 15. And this is the confidence that we have towards him. That if we ask anything according to his what? His will. He what? He hears us. And if we know that he hears us in whatever we ask, we know that we will have the request that we have asked of him. So some of y'all are going to ask me, what, 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 what is his will? Okay. What is his will? Don't put another God before him. 
That's his will. Love your neighbor as you love yourself. That's his will. Suffer the little children amongst you. That's his will. Go help the widows and the poor among you. That's his will. Be generous. Be a cheerful giver. That's his will. See, we get dumbfounded. I ain't calling nobody dumb. We get dumbfounded because we never want to open the pages of the book. There are stories filled about how God wants us to act in this walk, to know his will. He doesn't need to know mine and yours. He already knows it. He wants you to know. He wants to know what we're going to do for his people. Or are we only going to come into the congregation, sit in the seats Sunday after Sunday, and never do anything for anybody else? Is that it? Your, his hearing will be limited. His hearing will be limited. Because it's about his will being done. And I recognize can't get too many amens because that's just not the way we think. When we come out the womb, it's all about getting that attention. The spotlight has to be on us. So it's hard to think about a different way that God wants us to do things in our life because it may mean we don't get what we want. So you have a whole concept with prosperity gospel about doing something so you can get something. That's why that thing is all backwards. It's about doing his will, doing what he wants done in the earth realm, going overseas for some people that don't even have electricity half of the time. That's what I'm reading on these posts. Don't have running water like we do here in the United States of America. But have an absolute hunger for God. This word was preached to me. I'm just telling y'all what he told me. For me. Because I got a desire to hear from him. Because I want to walk in that daily. So I hope that this 104th day goes to 365, goes to 700, where every day I go and I spend time with God. So it can change my life. And I won't think the same. And I won't do the same things every day that I've been doing. Everything we have to keep doing and under, to understand God's will. We're asking for a lot. And Luke 16, 10 tells us, whoever can be trusted with a little, and I hear him say little, he said very little, can be trusted with much. So the opposite of that is true. Whoever's dishonest with very little will be dishonest with very much. And so we got we to gotta understand that piece, guys. God wants to entrust all of us. But he's not going to do that until we turn towards him <laughs> and do what we need to do. Next one. This is a next one. Uh, 1 Peter 3, 7. <laughs> this one caught me off guard. It did. I'm not going to lie. Talk directly to me. Likewise, husbands, live with your wives in an understanding way, showing honor to the woman as the weaker vessel, since they are heirs with you 
of the grace of life so that your prayers may not be hindered. Man. I done jacked up quite a few times in this area. <laughs> amen. Joe Mo, amen. But let me tell you what happened. During this 100 days, 101 days, I've been able to fall in love with Christ again. And as I began to fall in love with Christ, I began to fall in love with her again. And the power of that is she didn't have to do nothing. Because God is telling me, you got to deal with home, son. You got to love her. I give her things to tell you, and you're not accepting it. She told me something the other night, and I was about to get upset with it because she said it in that little high pitched voice of hers. <laughs> and so I was about to get mad. <laughs> so I'm walking, doing this walk with God, right? And so I come home and I say, honey, uh, this brother that did us wrong, and I think God is telling me to lead him to Christ, and he's homeless. And I'm thinking about, we got these bedrooms in this house, and uh, can he stay? And that high-pitched voice came, <laughs> and she said, you better make sure you're listening to God. That's what she told me. Am I right? And so I, that, that's what I have had trouble with. Distinguishing his voice in my mind. I didn't tell her this, but I'll tell y'all this, and now she gets to be a privilege of that. Because I'm that transparent without the fault. This young lady that works for me at the, at the call center was struggling. And I didn't give no money. but Because I, I, I struggled with hearing God's voice. And she was 340 bucks short for rent. And the first thing that came on my heart was, I know what she make. Why is she 340 bucks short? That's the first thing that came. Well, I know she took vacation the other day because I approved it. So why is she 340 bucks short? But that's not what God asked me to do. I, I didn't do it. And that's, that's the sad part for me because I'm fighting with God's voice in my own head. And I've been on this journey for 104 days, so I know I'm not quite there. I didn't know how to do that. I didn't know if I should start giving money to people on the job or should I bring the love of Christ with me. And take it, because we've got some things going on and money's going everywhere, and I'm just not trusting. So I didn't give. Perhaps that's an indictment on me that I'll have to deal with with God. He's taken care of me and my family for a long time. I've seen it. It's kind of like Caleb going into the promised land with them other brothers. Seeing the fruit that God made. Seeing the rivers flowing with milk and honey. 
getting excited. They brought back some of the spoils of the land that God had promised to them. Yet he was the only one that spoke out that we could do it. We can do it. We can go to the Amorites and we can take control and get our land that God has promised to us. But the other brothers didn't see it that way. They saw it like me. I see everything that God gave them, but I'm a grasshopper in my own mind. I'm small. I don't realize I got a big God that stands behind me or in front of me and does my battle before I even get there. I don't know if that makes me a coward or I'm just not there yet. But I want to get there. We want to get there. Does anybody want to hear direct, want God to hear their prayers in here? Anybody want them? Yeah, amen. Amen. I know I want them too. So let's get it right. Amen. Uh, this one, I didn't put all the scripture up there, and uh, we, we come into a close, and I'll be done. The sixth one. So that fifth is marital conflict, as you saw. And then the fifth one is Matthew 17, 14 to 21. And this is when the man brought Jesus, the demon-possessed boy, uh, brought the disciples, the demon-possessed boy, and they couldn't heal him. And so the man ended up and he said, I brought my boy to your disciples, and they couldn't do nothing with him. Can you? And that's when he goes on his rant and says, boy, y'all some unbelieving folks. Y'all didn't walk this walk with me. Y'all didn't heard me. Y'all didn't seen the miracles. Y'all didn't seen everything. And y'all still can't do what you need to do. This perverse and unbelieving nation. Isn't that the crux of our problem? We really don't believe. When it's all said and done, I do what I want to because I don't really think that God is going to do it for me. So I get out there and I go first. You have prayed and prayed for loved ones. Prayed. Why won't they change their ways? You've prayed. And every time God answers the prayer, we jump in the way. And we begin to be God for them. So they can never get to God because that wall has been built. And you don't think your prayers are being uh, listened to because it isn't the way you think it should come. The way I think it should come. And that's what happens to us. We jump in the way and we circumvent God's process so he can be God in that loved one's life. And as long as we stay God in that loved one's life, he will never have to go through nothing. She'll never have to go through anything to understand who he is when he brings them out. Unbelief. Y'all don't walk this walk with unbelief. God has told us in his word, and if we just take time and go read it, he says if you have the faith of a mustard seed, you can move this mountain into the sea. Those problems that are crushing. Karen got up here and blew it out the water last week. Got a husband that has cancer. Got a son that has cancer. Got a mom that unexpectedly died. That's crisis. And you have to get ready to move yourself out the way as intimate as that is. You got to let God take it over. You can't do it. And she explained that so very well. 
Amen. She explained that so very well. You can't keep jumping in. You got to allow God to do what God is going to do. And he'll be able to hear us when we believe that he hears us. We have to believe that. That he hears us. Last one. I'll be done. Worship team, you can start coming forward. Proverbs 28 and 9 just simply says, who, He who turns away his ear from hearing the law of God and man, I use the amplified here, even his prayer is an abomination, hateful and revolting to God. We walk in here, just to use very, because I did it for a lot of years. That's, I tell this story, and some of y'all heard it, so forgive me. I don't, I don't dress up no more. And people say you're getting in front of people, you should have a certain look. I had that certain look for 10 years, and my life was out of control. out of control, getting divorces and doing stuff that I shouldn't do. So I don't dress up no more because I don't want to be that guy. So I was going in listening, not obeying the law. And God said, my prayers during those times was an abomination to you. An abomination, hateful. That's what the proverb says. I don't want to be that guy. I want the Lord to hear my prayers. I want the Lord to hear your prayers. Now, this may have been a many tough message, but it was tough on me first, y'all. Because it's hard to come up here in front of you and put all my stuff and lay it down on the ground in front of you. But the Lord told me that's what I got to do. Not to return back to that guy that I used to be. When I didn't care if your loan didn't make it so that I could have a few extra bucks in my pocket. I don't want to be that guy. And I don't want you not to have your prayers answered. Sinful behavior, sinful thoughts raises a wall between us and God. Our motives have to be right. We can't keep going to God and we know our motives isn't right. We have to understand what the will of God is. It's in his book. He wants to be found. He's not hiding. He wants to answer your prayers. He wants to give us the desires of our heart. We got to want to do something different. I got to live my life right with this lady right here for those of us that are married. And it don't have to have that she has to do anything for me anymore. Because my relationship with the master is growing. And as long as I stay in love with him, she doesn't have anything to worry about. I've fallen in love with him back in love. And I'm never going to let it go. You got to believe. You can't walk this walk and talk this talk and don't really believe what you're doing Sunday after Sunday after Sunday. And please don't have disregard for his word. 
His word is important. His word is mandatory. We got to stop doing everything else. We put the job first. We put the children first. We put the spouse first. We put Monday night football first. We put Sunday football. I'm talking about me. We put it all before him. And we expect for him to hear us all the time. And I'm telling you, he does not. Turn your frequency to him. For those of you that feel like me, I, I believe God is calling you. You know he's calling you. As our ministers get ready to come up front. I know he's calling somebody in this audience. And it may be one or two of you that just want God to hear my prayers. I think we've laid out definitely a foundation to be started. And I want you to come up. And if you haven't given your life to God, I want you to give your life to God and him first. I want you to come up. And I want you to say, Lord, I've been selfish with the things that I've done. And my prayer life hasn't been what it needs to be. And I'm walking this walk and talking this talk. And I'm doing it with one foot in the world. And one foot in the church. And it's not working. If you just need prayer today to help turn you in that direction. My prayer is that you would come forward. Don't, don't worry about it. It's like me. I, I need prayer too. All the time. So come on up and join us if you will. Let us all stand to our feet. Maybe that'll help us move. Help us encourage someone that's been struggling in their prayer life that's been struggling getting an answer from God. We got time for you. We got time to hear from you. Because it's all about God's timing. So if you want prayer today, you don't have to be embarrassed. We have time. It's a hard, hard, kind of hard message. But that don't mean it's not right. Do we want to change our lives? Or do we want to remain doing the same things? Do we want God in the first position? Or do we want to keep him in second and third position? Do we want our prayers answered? Or do we want to keep going over stumbling blocks? Joe Mo, God told me, man, when you told me about your house burning down, that was a testimony to me, bruh. And his wife verified it if you're here on Wednesday nights. House burned down. Didn't get angry. Just wanted to make sure it was electrical. I want that kind of prayer life. I want that kind of relationship where I'm not going crazy when things happen and crises happen in my life. pray with and while the ministers are praying. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord God, for this message today. We thank you, Lord God, that you won't compromise yourself to give us the desires of our heart. That we have to begin walking with you in a new way, Father God. Putting your precepts first. And then you might, if you will, and I know you 
have said it in your word that the desires of our heart will get taken care of. Take care of my people. That's what he's calling us to do. Let's take care of each other so that God can get the glory. So we thank you, Lord God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. You may be seated.